99 bottles, yeah, we've got them all. Line them all up and we'll drink till we fall. Cause off the cantina's the best liquor store. Off the cantina, you'll never need more. Welcome to the Art the Cantina podcast. I'm your host, JP, with the other host, Anthony. That's and what he today, says. We're going to be reviewing world famous, I would say. I think you would agree with me. What makes a world famous? Sazerac Rye. We'll get into that. Sazerac Rye review tasting, one of the big hitters in the whiskey, spirits, bourbon game. I'm going to pour some out for the homies. We already did. Okay, we just threw out a nasty mouth. A little bit of not glass. I kind of like a uh, trick I learned from Christian, the psalm. There's always prep your glassware, even though mm-hmm. you, you took all the time to sanitize it and clean it. Mm-hmm. Throw a little bit of the product in there. It's already alcohol, so it's going to sanitize it. Chuck it. Throw it. Look at me. It doesn't, there's not enough wax on it. Like this. Look, 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 look. Let me show you. Don't do it. Don't it's going to go all over me. No, no, don't no. Be no, fearful. no, I don't want to be fearful. I just don't want to get whiskey all over me. See? You, see, you didn't even reach nice it either. Throw. You didn't reach it either. Fuck it three times farther than you. That's no, better. Let's try one more time. Let's try one more time. No, because you're going to One more time. One more time for the pod. Ready? Almost. Come on. Let's see you do a big shot. Let's see. And this is how, this is a is large a, shot. Large chance. Nice chance. Hold Unless on. I could do better, then maybe we'll do one more time. I wish time. I had a camera right here so you could see the Sazerac. I was thinking we should do different Boom. angles from like up above. Yeah, one day. Be like this. Oh, okay. Pour one me more. a Sazzy. Oh, that's All right. terrible. All right. Enough fucking messing around here. Like this. <laughs> see, that was that's right to the front. Yeah, it was good. good, one. good, good. All right. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Let's get batting down the business. If we had the microphones on the table, Joey would be losing his mind. <laughs> no! All right. Post production uh, hell. Again. This is the thumbnail. Uh, yeah, so we're going to review the Sazerac Rye whiskey. Why is it so famous? Well, they made it Sazerac famous. Sazerac Company, they made it famous. They built it from. Start from the bottom of the here, I guess, right? You can tell who read the notes, who didn't read the notes. I mean, you literally just printed out these notes. It's a liar. And That's what guys know. do on, on stage, on TV. They read the notes on the air. I don't, I don't read notes. I'm a fuck. I free bull. So you can go on the website, on Sazerac's website, and read all this stuff. You can read these notes yourself. You can you figure <laughs> yeah. all this out. But I'm going to decipher this for you. Okay, so Sazerac Rye Whiskey, the one and only New Orleans. New Orleans? New Orleans. Original. This, late, this idiot's got to listen to gospel music now. All right, the mics are good enough. Yeah, I'm going to pick it up. Pick it up. All, right. All right, so this thing says rye whiskey dates back to the 1800s, around the time when saloons uh, that were fronts, they were disguised as coffee houses, began lining the streets in New Orleans. It was a Sazerac coffee house on Royal Street where the local people served hot toddies. It Disgusting. says toddies here, which I don't know. Hot toddies are gross. I don't know if they were hot in New Orleans. I don't think they would be hot since it's already hot down there. Hot toddies are nasty. Uh, I'd never liked them. I always Gross. thought weird people drink hot toddies. Yeah, it's a little name there. <sighs> if you drink hot toddies and you're watching the show, say it in the comments. Say what the hell you I try to hot toddies. Defend Disgusting. yourself. Uh, um, also, but you see that coffee house. Now, we have a, uh, there's a store across the street. Those types of stores were always cafes. You go to you go to Amsterdam, you go to the weed cafe. So that's got to be something where the illegal substances were consumed in coffee cafes. You coffee. think maybe they were smoking dope, smoking opium in there? No, I'm just saying they were hiding their whiskey with coffee. The same way you would go, oh, I'm going to an Amsterdam cafe. I'm going to a cafe to smoke weed. But now you could just smoke weed wherever. It's like New York. You walk around, it just smells like piss. But they didn't have fucking bars back in the 1800s. I don't get why they had to be caught co- uh, disguised as coffee houses. Prohibition didn't come around until 1910. That's when they got rid of it. 1920. That's when they got rid of it. This says 1800. I'm sure there was some sort of... 1800 New Orleans? Was that uh, was that part of uh, America yet? When did we do the Louisiana Purchase? 17-something? No. no. 1812? So maybe, I have no I fucking know. idea. This is a goddamn Point fucking being... liquor podcast. This ain't no fucking American <laughs> say, history. Say history. I used to be good at history, but then started doing drugs and you forget everything. You got um, Stewart on. Stewart was talking Stewart a bunch would, of facts yeah. yesterday. Well, he would be a interesting uh, podcast guest. So, this uh, whole point of me reading this. Hot ties made with Sazerac Rye and Picard's. 
Okay, and it is shit. So <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Pacquard. The libation <laughs> became known as the Sazerac. America's first branded cocktail was born. <laughs> I can't read this French shit. All right. I'm fucking born oh, in this goddamn country. You love the French. The Italians give me shit too because you can't pronounce it in Italian. I go, motherfucker. I can pronounce We won. In okay. Italian more than I can. French. Get the fuck. Dude, so, Paul the Sazerac is the whiskey that started Paul it all. Paul, Peter. I, I don't know what the fuck that means by it started at all. It started all the whiskey, Sazerac? Sazerac, the first whiskey? America's first branded co cocktail was born. This is the whiskey that started it all. So I we, think it means this is like the first whiskey that was put into cocktails. We were supposed to answer questions. I think we created more questions. Well, listen, it's learning. It's life. You got a question, you got to answer it. You got to question it again. So part of the rise everything. from Buffalo Trace like so under the Sazerac that. brand. <laughs> Sazerac Rye 18, which is part of the antique collection, one of those big boys, one of those expensive ones. The yeah. regular Sazerac Rye, which is a, I believe it was a six-year-old, but mm -hmm. uh, I think there might be four-year-old blended in there as well. And the Thomas Handy Sazerac, that's also part of the antique collection. You know what's strange about all three of those? They can be found here at Arthur Cantina or OutThereCantina.com. Um, to me, I've had the entire antique collection uh, sampled at the same time. I don't know if you could go as far as to say these are vintage uh, whiskeys, but out of the Willem LaRue, the Thomas Handy, the Eagle Rare 17, mm -hmm. the Sazerac 18, and the George T. Sag, the Sazerac 18 was the best whiskey, in my opinion, of the entire offering from Buffalo Trace. Big fucking words. I like Pappy a lot. I think the 10 and 12 are really good as well. But for me, the Sazerac 18 hit all the right marks. The flavor, the balance, the complexity. To me, I buy Sazerac 18 if money was no object. Used to be a big George T. St uh, George T. Stag fan. For some reason, my palate has changed. It's no longer the same. I don't know what if they did something different with the George T. Stag. I don't know if my tongue is different after COVID. But the Sazerac 18, by far... Is worth every fucking penny. You want to get the best whiskey out of the antique collection? Go for the 18. Now, this I've had this before, um, and I, it's been a while, so I really can't recall. Uh, but just smelling it now, I'm looking at the notes, and even without looking at the notes, heavy vanilla. That smell though is fantastic. It's I don't fan remember. That's it's, what I'm saying. It's it smells so good. This good before. That's what I'm. I'm. I don't know why. Yeah, because I remember not being a fan, but. Right now, it's, it smells like candy. It's delicious. It smells really good. The first sip killed me. It super overpowered my palate. But the second sip, it's pretty nice. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of vanilla. I'm getting the taste. I'm getting like a... Like candy. Like, like a, almost like a candy cane. I don't know what year you were picking up. Like... like not like a candy cane, but like it's. I think you're picking up a lot of the vanilla. And maybe you're thinking of uh, the peppermint, peppermint swirl. Actually, this is very good. I want it to be like, it's not that good. I like to be the naysayer. Yeah, I want to uh, hate this. And I can't. Caramel? 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 How do you say it? Caramel. caramel. I'm a caramel guy. Carmel's, Carmel's in place in New York. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Where's Joey's take? He's looking at it like a holding it to light. Oh, his glass around. Beautiful. Well, you heard him speak. Now Nick can shut up. I don't think you're gonna hear him though. And now he, Andy's putting it in his hands, making weird squishy sounds <laughs> with it. Sound um, effects. I'm getting that like. That rye burn. I always feel like rye gives me a nice fucking right down the, the old highway down there. It gives me a nice warm feeling. And I'm getting some of that now. But again, on the nose, it's like fantastic. Um, would you recommend this rye? Yeah. I mean, for 25 bucks. Yeah. What else do you want, really? Like for 25 25 bucks. And it's it's not even like you Joe get... Blow's rye made in a bathtub. You know what I mean? It's right. like a... it's two hundred years old. This thing, you can't get any other whiskey at this price point. That's from a big house. Uh -uh. Jameson is thirty five. 
Jack Daniels is 32 for And they're fifth. both dog shit, if you ask me. Oh, I didn't say that. But, I um, said that. I worry. I'll say you know, it. All these big houses, they all have offerings at certain price points. I think for Buffalo Trace and Sazerac, this is probably the best bang for your buck. $25 for a fifth. It's nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. It's, it's really nothing. I mean, I can't, I can't get what I was good at smell. How much is a case of beer? 30 bucks? I just swug like the whole shot of it. Like, it was nothing. Yeah, I don't I think did. you should take uh, big gulps of it. Yeah, but also, it. I did. I took a big gulp. Look at the fucking flies. They're coming to this whiskey like it's... Maybe you're right. Maybe there's some kind of candy in here. I'm telling you, it's so sweet. <clears throat> For a rye, it's mad sweet. The only rye that I think is sweeter and more pleasant on my palate is our private barrel rye that you can only get here at all the cantina, the Fez Edition 1. The Castle and Key rye. Yes, Castle and Key. Also a higher proof. It, and it's higher proof. I, I, and I always say it drinks more like a bourbon. It's, like very, it's much sweeter. The Castle and Key rye is more my speed. It's got the grain. It's got a heavier body. It's more flavorful. You really have a lot going on in the tongue. Granted, it's also $60 a bottle. We're talking, you know, double, mm -hmm. two and a half times the cost of the Sazerac rye. So you expect a different kind of whiskey for that price point. People always say, like, oh, why is this more expensive? Why is this cheaper? You know, different shit goes into it. They're going to use different quality barrels, different quality grain. They're going to let things age a longer period of time or less period of time. The rick houses are temp controlled or they're not temp controlled. A lot also, of different things go into it. Nice bottle, too. I'm a bottle guy. Let me get a little more. Of course. I know you gave me the old saloon pass. <laughs> so this originally, Sazerac named after the... The house, right? Is that what it was said? And then they changed it to rye because they, they, it was originally well, a brandy drink. So originally they used cognac to make the Sazerac. And I didn't know this until I started doing a little bit of research that oh, Sazerac, sorry. the company here, bought the cognac house. I was like, do that, do that again. That was a week. Joey got scared. <laughs> Now, so, um, they bought the Sazerac Cognac producer in okay. France. Oh, okay. So it was the French, and then they were like, yeah, hey, we're just going to keep the name. They replaced it with their right, which makes sense, because if you're a company producing whiskey here, and you want people to consume your whiskey here, mm -hmm. I'm going to substitute the imported stuff and use my domesticated stuff, domesticated, domestic, and put that in the cocktail and sell drinks that way. That's what a lot of uh, bars do. When a guy's trying to get his product into a bar, they'll make a cocktail with it. Mm -hmm. And then they'll put it in the cocktail. Uh, they'll call it something retarded, like the, the Blue Thunder. And they'll put, uh, it's made with this and this, featuring Sazerac rye. Yeah. I'll just use that as an example. Um, and that's how they'll hustle a lot of the cocktails. So in turn, if you order a lot of that cocktail, you get a lot of the whiskey. You know, they make more sales and the bar's making sales and everyone's happy. Uh, just something to pay attention to the next time you go out to eat or drink. You see a cocktail menu, you see the products featured in there. It's usually that company who designed that cocktail in collaboration with that restaurant, and they're pumping it out. It's it's all coming from here. It's all coming from Sazerac Coffee House people. Uh, they came up with this whole thing. I can't get over the aroma. I love the smell. I'm my witness as a cologne to attract beautiful wen women or horny men. Oh. Either one. I'll yeah. take them. You're going to attract somebody. He's going to attract, yeah, like a Bigfoot or something. <laughs> My dream. Smells, um, he smells like so, yeah, spice and we, all clothes. Listen, you can get it. <laughs> it smells like peppercorns and vanilla. Oh, every time he comes through the door, it smells like coriander. You could uh, cinnamon. You could get it here. Buy it now. Uh, and I guess that's the educational part of the programming. I mean, we, just we figured on it now. we're going to do something a little different on the podcast. Try to do like a nice review each podcast. So we can pump through the 1,400 products that we have at the store. Which is not really a lot of products. Think about it. Uh, Costco has something. Yeah. Like okay. Crazy. Well, we're not Costco. We're a whole. Um, we're this, Total we're Wine smaller like, than a Costco bathroom. You know what I mean? Total Wine I think has like fifteen thousand SKUs or something like that. And their pieces of dog shit. That we're at Total well, Wine. you're not gonna get the service you get over here. Listen, if anyone, if any manager at Total Wines is a problem, they can find me here. We can fight. It's a challenge to every. Total I will Wine. fight. I will fight any manager that works at Total Wine. Yes. I'll fight any owner. I'll, I'll definitely the kick CEO. the shit out of any owner at Total Wine. If you're the boss running the whole show. You're definitely sitting on your ass a lot. I'll, I'll, I'll fuck I you mean, up. I <laughs> mean, guys, lean back in his chair. I'll fuck you up. <laughs> if he's a stock boy, 
a little Probably inexperienced. Be. He might do a little MMA. He's gotta got to be careful. On you. He's got to you know, like catch him off guard, hit him with like a question, then leg sweep him. <laughs> hit him with a question. Hey, what's that? Man, just fucking catch him off guard. Let me take some Sazerac right out of my hand and throw it in his eye. Like the salt. Like throw it in their eye. Ah! Ah! The cinnamon! Ah! Now, we, hit him. We, uh, we haven't done a Goofy of the Week. Well, our episodes are all out of whack. We didn't, we released the Trump My Shoes episode. It was supposed to come out this week, but we released it. We sped it up. Yeah, we, we wanted to prematurely... Uh, want to capitalize off that Trump assassination attempt. Uh, then we got Johnny coming out next week. But then, uh, we, we haven't done a... My point is, we haven't done a Goofy in a week. We did one for Trump, kind of, but... Goofy of the Week this week. We, we need gotta, a jingle. Goofy of the Week. <laughs> Something like that. It's Someone stole our fucking Ferrari stickers off of our garbage can. So, our... Initial garbage can, if you listen to the early episodes, got stolen. If you're a fan stolen. of the podcast, go back to episode whatever. And you go. Some low-life piece of shit with a biker cut stole our brand-new trash can from in front of the store. I only know this because they have really nice cameras that can see things from far away. And luckily, I was able to get a neighborhood trash can that someone forgot somewhere. We didn't steal it. Someone gave it to us. I was all banged up. So I had them clean it up nice, and then I took it to the street, and I spray-painted it. The little Ferrari red, the little chrome on the rim. The rims, black tires. The black tires out. I sprayed the top nice. Fucking thing was brand new. And I said, you know what? It's Ferrari red. You gotta get some fucking Ferrari stickers for this thing. So I went on eBay. I think they were like 20 bucks. They were expensive. They were expensive. They're they Ferrari, look, after all. Look really nice. And I slapped them on and they made the garbage can look great. Stood out. Best garbage can on the block. Yeah. Well, I knew like if someone stole it, I know where my fucking Ferrari stickers are. I know where my garbage can is. But, you know, the stickers are gone now. I would believe it was Mother Nature if one just, you know. Weather. Yeah. Had, had, you know, gone missing or was hanging off, was peeling off. But both are gone. So that leads you to believe. Uh, we got to go back on the cameras. The theft is at foot. We got to find who it is. I mean. The criminal in the street. Now. What do you I, do when you call it into the 48? You go, hey. Someone stole my stickers? Stole my stickers. Off stole my, my Ferrari stickers. Some guy's going to come here hey, and take a report. cops, come here. Someone stole my Ferrari stickers. They're like, what? My Ferrari stick. Your Ferrari? Yeah, yeah, my Ferrari stick. And once they get there, I'm like, I'm like, oh, the stickers. With depreciated value, it's probably like, well, it was 20. It's probably worth 16 now. Well, we haven't found out who it is. We got to go back on the cameras. Now, yeah. is it a goofy? I guess, but it's more of a... Who alert. do you think it is? We didn't go back on the cameras and no, look. I'll haven't. find out who it was. But I think it's think it was be, a kid? I think it's a kid. I you think, think it's, it's a crackhead? We've had crackheads I mean, well, weird well, shit over crackheads here. Crackheads is a wild card. They will do anything. I had a crackhead uh, recently, same crackhead that we see on camera every other week at like 10 o'clock at night smoking crack in front of Oh, the, that's a lady crackhead. Yeah. She came by the other day, uh, maybe a week or so, tried to sell us a skateboard. She's like, I got the skateboard. I was like, get the fuck out of my face, lady. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched that lady get plowed out by other that's crackheads. disgusting. Yeah, not like in person, but other people show me security forms. That's disgusting. And I'm like, oh, that's her. Yeah, that's her. Real I mean, today. Listen, I don't want to... I don't want to pile on these poor people with crippling, life-altering addictions. It's a hell of a choice. It's a hell of a choice. Uh, you either get help or just get away from me. Either way, I don't want anything to do with you. Well, what's crazy is I saw this lady during COVID. Everyone's wearing a mask. Everyone's got gloves on. Like when it first started, people wearing glasses and shit. Mm -mm. I saw this lady Not drink. Me, never. This guy wore a mask. He's lying. I didn't wear glasses. I, I didn't this wear lady gloves drink. like a bozo. I wore a mask because... They forced you to. They forced to put a muzzle on your fucking mouth. Let me start it. Okay, firecracker. I watched this crackhead lady drink someone else's coffee <laughs> in the, during the middle of the pandemic. Like, it was year one pandemic. Someone left their coffee outside. She was like, oh. And she went and she drank the fuck other guy's coffee. Now, you use your logic, what you see in life, right? You hear things She's on TV. fine. See? It's all fake, baby. It's not fake. It's all but fake. You got to think about it. This lady... Does she have like the right combination of like bacteria and viruses to counter anything that comes into her system? It's something called crackhead strain. I don't know. It's crackhead strain. Man. She got some kind of parasite in her that's keeping her alive. Yeah. That's just like eating anything coming her way. It's called crack. Man. Who the hell knows? I listened to this other podcast um, about this Italian lady who has all like these home remedies, and it's like medicine passed down. Apparently, Basilicata is one of the oldest inhabited places on earth that they dates back a really long time and they have records of people living there that are like the oldest in the world 
something like the oldest city that was inhabited, something like that. Fucking cut from the genes of gods. <laughs> so that's where we come from. Uh, this lady was explaining all these old home remedies, and she's yapping about using vinegar to kill everything. She's mm-hmm. the vinegar. The vinegar. I can tell you, you throw the vinegar everywhere. <laughs> come to my house. My the, the, like one of the dogs pissed on the floor. They throw vinegar all over the place. My father's boiling vinegar to like it makes it smell nice. I'm like it smells like vinegar. It's disgusting. But yeah, they use vinegar for everything. I used to smell it when I would go into my house. Like my, when my mom and dad were living in the same house. And I'm like, what the fuck is that smell? And I couldn't figure it out until years later. I'm like, oh, they were using vinegar mm-hmm. to fucking disinfect everything. That makes so much sense. And you think about it too. You buy Clorox. There's a fucking million things in the fucking Clorox bottle. Of course. And you're spraying that all over the place. Yeah. And the smells inhabiting the, all the rooms. Kids licking it. Your dog's licking it. My kids it. are there. I mean, yeah, it's terrible. Now, I wonder sometimes, like, my my oldest one has eczema. And I'm wondering, like, was it because we were using too many cleaning products during COVID? We were spraying fucking Lysol everywhere, trying to kill everything? Poor kid got eczema. The second one, you could roll him down the hill. He's fine. He'd, he'd eat dirt. He just fucking he could never get sick. He's fine. <laughs> he's a lot to roll down. He's perfect. He, he never gets nice. He's fine all the time. The oldest, the first one is a little sensitive to some stuff. But I start thinking back and I go, fuck, maybe we should use more vinegar. More vinegar. Vinegar and piss, right? That's the old saying. Then again, everyone died from like a simple uh, infection back then. There's no antibiotics. So That's not true. Well, there's some predating shit to antibiotics. But well, I'm saying not everybody died from a simple infection. A lot of people died during World War II because they couldn't get penicillin and stuff. Well, that's when... Uh, what, what was I listening? I was listening somewhere about that, about World War II, about penicillin, and then how uh, there was like a race to find the bat. Like I, I forgot which exact bacteria, but some lady ended up discovering it in like a cantaloupe. It was like a rare bacteria that was like even more pounds per square inch of bacteria to make penicillin. Something crazy like that. I don't know where you got that info from. No, no. I'm going to say no, no, it's, it has to do with Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> no, no, I don't think it was. It could have been, but I don't think it was. I'm pretty sure it, it is. It was like, it was a true story. She found like her cantaloupe that went moldy, had like this red mold or whatever. And it, it was like more efficient in making penicillin. Uh, but yeah, crazy stuff. Oh, yeah, and where did that come from? God. Not from fucking Fauci's lab. It came from God. Gave it to us. Listen, man. Okay. When, the, when the Fauci statue goes up, I'll be I'm not, the not, I'm not talking about that scumbag. <laughs> Every episode, people get a laugh. Oh, it's you, so yeah. easy to get you riled up by Fauci. Fauci's a goddamn hero. All right? I'm, I'm going to take this. They're going to they're gonna gonna this, they're gonna build a school. They're going to call it Dr. Fauci yeah. High School. I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to say anything bad. <laughs> <laughs> It's so easy to get people upset and they're trying not to go crazy because they're scared of saying what's on their mind. They're scared of opening up and saying what they really feel. Well, because I start spouting off. Next thing you know, I'm the next three person, fuck the three named person on the news. Okay? They're going to be like, oh, he did it. No, no, no. The CIA little, did it. Give him a little more ride, comrade. This guy's getting wrecked. I still haven't finished my second glass. My cup is small, so it's. I got three, drink three times the amount. Penelope for the cup. Yeah, poor Penelope people. I Their know. sales have tanked, man. Well, they have. They uh, have tanked. You know, good for them. Well, really I guess well. good for them. To... We were fucking hustling Penelope. Uh, yeah, they tanked. And I have no one putting them into abandoned carts. Nothing. I got no one coming into the store looking for them. Well, which I is, got no which high is school crazy behind because it. the, I don't know if you can see behind me, the toasted. With, off the shelf, man. Yeah, toasted, toasted rye? Toasted, we just put, toasted rye or bourbon? You the bourbon. bourbon. I like the ride better. Um, yeah, you got no one coming in for it anymore. Uh, I guess you guys fucked up by firing all the people. Yeah, that's what you get. They bought the company for X amount, fired everybody, moved it out to Missouri. That's my D. I still think luck, the, I still think the Rio's fantastic. Rio you, is fantastic. You get these people that are like snobs, like, that's not bourbon. I want my bourbon to taste like fucking dirt. The Rio's fucking fantastic. Well, those kinds of people also are guys who like... Uh, Want to perceive being a tough guy? Yes. yes. So they want to drink these like gasoline. Yeah, I, I need gasoline. High bourbon. proof whiskey, and they want to laugh at their friends who choke on it because mm-hmm. they can't stomach it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not nice. Be a nice guy. Don't don't put your friends down. Yeah. Prop them up. Yeah, yeah. Some people like you can't put ice. I put ice in every fucking glass of bourbon I have. Okay, it opens it up. It's cooler. It's nice to enjoy for me, and that's how I drink my fucking. Well, bourbon. there's a traditionalist thought behind it to. You should only drink it straight. 
I mean, yeah. If well, it's good if that I'm way. gonna taste one, I always like, yeah. When we sample, we always drink shit straight, just so we know what the uh, the core of it is. We don't want to drink something on ice because then it might taste good on ice, but tastes like shit when you drink it straight. Most things I drink are are either on ice or in the freezer or something. Um, obviously, any Amaro, which we have a shit ton of that, I always put it in my freezer. Uh, mezcal, same thing, put it in my freezer. A nice ice cube. I mean, you're dulling down the um, the flavors of it when you get it really cold. You're not tasting as much. No. Um, it is going to warm up as you're drinking it. Yeah, it warms obviously. up, but it, it also, it's more enjoyable for me to drink that way. Cool. See, that's a good rule, though. I used to give my dad so much shit because he would drink soda and ice with his Colorossi wine. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the fuck, dad? And then he would be in the store, and people asked him, what's a good wine? And he would grab the Colorossi. This is a good one. I'm like, uh, like we're trying to sell the hundred dollar bottle. We're not trying to sell the fucking ten dollar gallons of fucking Colorosi. But he liked it. He mm -hmm. liked to drink it like that. That's mm -hmm. what he did on Sundays. He have that. He drink it. One of my favorite things was coming. So it makes you happy. Makes you happy. What are you gonna do? Coming to your house. We're going out one night, and you know we're probably what twenty, if that. And I come to your house. Your parents invite me in. You're upstairs jerking off or whatever you're doing, taking fucking forever to get ready. Uh, uh, you know, hindering me, uh, hit me for being uh, me and your father sitting down at the kitchen table. We're just drinking Colorado at seven up. <laughs> I just kind of like, what? I'm like, I had to drive. I'm like, all right. I just kept pounding him while you were fucking shaving your pubes or whatever you were doing. I'm getting <laughs> fucking dressed, man. I clean myself. Yeah, what yeah. The fuck? I don't even know what we did that night, but I just remember drinking seven up a Colorado. I'm like, this shit is delicious. <laughs> hey, you loved it. You should drink it like fucking nothing. I'll tell you right now, the Sazerac Rise is going down pretty well. I wonder what Color OC uh, sales are nowadays. We've stopped selling it years ago. Mm -hmm. Just not the right store for it. Um, you need a lot of space, a lot of space, a lot of square footage, a lot of strong backs to lift those fucking cases. Two, so people drink, two types of people drink Color OC. Old Italians and alcoholics. But even then, they don't come in anymore looking for it. Because they know they can't. Well, you I have mean, a color us? You know, it's funny because we used to have one guy that would always come in and ask for the time. I'm like, you, you come in every, you know we don't. Uh, have I think he had a mental, uh, forgot what he did like yeah, yesterday. kind of. Yeah, but I think he's dead because I haven't seen him. He's very old. Uh, no, I seen him. I seen him a couple weeks ago. Maybe because it'd be, it would, no, well, no, because there was two guys that would come in. One, one guy would come in. He was nice. He had like a, one of those guys. He would come in. No, I don't got it. And. Then he would, I would sell him another 1.75 of like uh, whatever, one of these red wines that we have. And his friend was the loser. Like, no, let's go to the other place. And he's like, no, no, we're already here. We're buying this wine. And his friend was like the hand in his pocket type guy. This guy would always pay for it. His friend would be like, no, no, let's go get the color. Horsey. And this guy would come in, buy the wine like a gentleman. Either way, shout out to that guy wherever he is. Um, The gallon wines. Gallon wines were a thing for a long time. I mean, growing up, that's all. I remember that's all my parents. I mean, my parents drink shit wine now, and I yell at them. I'm like, let me, I'll bring something to you guys. They don't even, like, I remember drinking Colorosi. I had to be like, I think I was like 19, 18. And one of my friends went to a local liquor store. He had, uh, I think he was old enough, who knows. But they would, it was like 10 bucks for a gallon of wine. And we'd buy, like, the Paisano or whatever freaking, and we'd just go in his basement and just drink. A gallon of wine between four people it was awful. <laughs> and we'd watch like weird uh, videos on the internet. We'd watch the Albert Albert Fish, the documentary of Albert Fish. You know Albert Fish is? No idea. 1900s serial killer. He would like steal children and eat them. And Okay, so anyway, Sazerac Rye, very nice. Albert Fish, Joey, picture. There's Albert Fish, old man, looks weird. Um, yeah, well, my dad would go to Bella. Killer in New York. He would visit his cousin, and they would get a five-liter jug of wine, and they couldn't get up from the table until they finished it. So between him and his cousin, they would drink that five-liter thing, and then get up and be wrecked in the middle of Bosco. Just like, ah, uh, all over the fucking place. We gotta go back to the motherland. Yeah, I gotta go. Overdue for a trip out there. Oh. <sighs> Salud. So, before we end this episode, I don't know how long we're going. How long have we been, Joey? 32? Oh, All right, that's pretty good. Minutes. What would you give? Like, I don't know how. Because right here, I see 
uh, wine enthusiast gave Sazerac 95 points. Now, Here's my piece about reviews. This review is companies. Exactly. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. Before you get into that, I was going to say, how would you rate this? Would you rate this a 1 out of 10, a 95 out of 100? Like, I feel like these ratings are so arbitrary. One, Sazerac Rye is paying wine enthusiasts. All these people paid off, I think, to begin with. Well, yeah, they'll pay them indirectly by taking a huge ad out in their magazine yeah. or whatever. Right? If I want a nice review, I'm going to take this six page ad. Out in your I don't know. There's another view from. rating we have here, 94.5 from Jim Murray Whiskey Bible. I don't know who Jim Murray is. I'll fucking throw you a beat, Jim Murray. He's big in the whiskey world. Well, guess what? I'll fight you anyways. I don't care. I'm bigger in the whiskey world. Not really, but so typically in the wine world, anything above like 88 points, 90 points, that's considered a decent wine. Anything above 95, 96 points is a very good wine. Anything that's 99 points, 100 points is like the best wine. Mm-hmm. Once in a good. decade, once in a quarter century quality wine that's a come up and you should buy now and stock up on. Um, so why is a wine enthusiast rating a rye? Stick, stay in your lane, man. If I want to know if this... It should be a whiskey uh, advocate. Yeah. Who does it? Who yeah. does like the cigars and uh, I know they do something else too. I don't remember. If, if I want to know if uh, oh. you know if this Nebbiolo is good, I'll go to wine and do this. Here's my beef with reviews. I don't like the Jim Murray. At least you know who the hell Jim Murray is. But who knows if it's even him sampling it or if it's one of like his interns yeah, or yeah. someone sampling it right in the review. A problem with the review companies, they get so big. Um, it's no longer that one person doing it. It's someone working for them doing it, doing the sampling and doing the review. So, again, you're getting a a skewed view from there. The second thing about it is you shouldn't take reviews seriously. I was like, this is the standard. This is the metric for the quality of this whiskey, this wine. Because, one, everything is in the place and the time. If I just ate a steak and I drink a Bordeaux, it's going to take great. If I drink a coffee and I tasted a, a... the same Bordeaux, it's going to taste like dog shit. Of course. So you don't know what this person was doing the day of they're doing the review. You'd hope that they, you know, said, oh, no, I didn't drink my Dunkin' Donuts today. I just had, uh, you know, uh, a crap or something, and I'm fucking reviewing crap. Bordeaux. Um, you know, again, someone that does only French wines or really likes French wines, are they going to like Italian wines? They might give Italian wines a bunch of shitty points well, because they're a French enthusiast. To, 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 that, to that point there. We know a certain somebody who's uh, big on French wines and he poo poos American wines, California wines. Yeah. You know, is that guy reviewing it? So you taking that guy's advice? I like, there's a lot of California wines that I enjoy. There's a ton of good California exactly. shit. But he, he's like, no, no, they all suck. California got in the map because they beat the French at some competition in the 70s. Again, you look all the shit up. I don't want to be quoting things. We're better um, than French in every way. So our wines are fucking world class. They're not just, uh, oh, because they're California. The biggest brands that sell the most volume, are they the best? Eh, maybe not, because they're tweaking their formula to be the most appealing. They might not be the best wines. But does California make great shit? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my beef with review companies. One, you don't know who it is. Two, you don't know what they're uh, if they're showing favoritism to one country or to one style or another. Uh, three, you don't know if they got paid. Four... Who gives a fuck what these other people say? At the end of the day, it's what you love. Like, you, I can love this and you can hate this. Yeah. So, If you don't know nothing and you want to get into it, I guess start with the reviews. It'll give you a basis, a way to get in. But once you've been drinking for a few years and you know things, you've been exposed to enough brands, use your own metric for what you think is good. If it tastes good to you, it's good. If it tastes like shit, it tastes like shit. What you should do, what I think you should always do, is drink... Three or four things alongside of each uh, of each other. Drink the twenty-five dollar rye with the sixty dollar rye with the one hundred and fifty dollar rye with the four hundred dollar rye. And if you really want to test yourself, do a blind tasting. Pour it in glasses, switch them all up, and see if you can figure out what is what. That's the next thing we have to do. Next episode, we're gonna do a blind tasting. Yeah, we'll do that. It'll be fun. Cause I want to challenge myself. And the You'd only be surprise time, like, too. I know we've had like uh, a couple times we had Christian on. And I like to pick his brain because, like, I always feel, like, I always say, so when I'm trying to explain a taste to somebody or 
I'm always bashful because I'm like, oh, does this taste like vanilla or whatever notes? And you look at me like, well, you wouldn't even idiot. I taste licorice. But I'm like, okay, maybe I am the idiot. And it makes me feel like, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. But at the same time, that's what it tastes like to me. It's going to taste like vanilla to me. It could taste like fucking... Yeah, but as the consumer and the buyer are two different things. As the buyer, you got to be a little more perceptive. You got to be able to discern what's in there, because you got to convey what's in there yeah, to but everyone. You're, but it's gonna taste different to you than it will to taste. The consumer doesn't have to worry about that because it's their, it's their perception of it. It's what they see in the wine. It's, to them, is what it is. But as the buyer, you need to say, okay, I pick a vanilla here. Well, th that's another. I pick thing. up anise here. When we when we do tastings, I do the same thing. I go, you know, someone go, oh, taste these wines. And I go, oh, this tastes like whatever, black cherry. And they're like, well, no, it tastes like flowers. I'm like, no, it doesn't. It tastes like this to me. And then they'll, they don't know what to say. They're like, they're trying to tell me what it's supposed to taste like. But it's like, well, That's this is what thing. it tastes like. When you read these descriptions on the back of bottles, I don't know who the fuck wrote them. Obviously, they're written so you can feel nice and warm mm -hmm. about buying the product. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, these are things that maybe you pick up in like 1% or 2% of people. Majority of the stuff you won't get. Off the nose of the Sazerac, what do you smell? What do you taste? Oh, I got the vanilla right off the nose. Yeah. Cracks you like a fucking ton of bricks. So that's like a factual thing, right? Everyone should be able to pick up the vanilla. But you get thin. That took me a while to figure out. Right? The, the whiskey itself is thin. Like, cause if someone is not used to smelling these things, they go, oh, well, it smells like whatever. They don't, but they it can't discern. It doesn't coat your tongue too much. No. Right? It's thin. It's like you should like see that and say, customer comes in, you know, this is a thin whiskey. It's going to hit you in the front, and it's going to just keep on going. It's not going to cover your, your tongue. It's not going to like engulf your palate with like thickness. I mean, you can see the legs on it. It's oily, but not on the taste. Because like a lot, a lot of things you... I, I would say this is very, very thin. Well, like, if you look at my really glass, thin. you can see that it, it's got the legs. But the legs are just the presence of alcohol. Yes. But it's not like, because you'll how taste... How fast it moves, how slow they move. Uh, I mean, you can argue, you could say, it's a determination of viscosity, but you I look at how thin this thing is. I can't fucking see the color. I mean... It's a thin, thin whiskey. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it should be, because it's 25 bucks. It mm -hmm. shouldn't be a thick, thick whiskey. Yeah. If it is, something, something ain't right. When, how many years? You said, what, three, four years? For last I checked it, I remember it being six year, but I think they changed it. It might be three or four years now. Which, if you need to know, also too, a little bit of factual information. Ninety on proof, forty-five percent, by the way. Um, the second the rye hits the inside of a brand new charred barrel, it's rye. Same thing for bourbon. The second it hits the inside of a charred new barrel, it's bourbon. When they say straight on it, it means a minimum of two years aged. But they don't have to put it. Right? It could be a four-year-old. They don't have to put straight on it. It's not a requirement. But they can do it after it's been aged for two years. So what? Uh, what's the? It's at least two years old. So is that the selling point for a straight? Something is a straight. Well, I would say it's selling point. It's more like you're giving uh, like a fact on okay. it. Okay. It's like you're saying, okay, this is factually older than two years, so you could put it. Straight. So they just said rye or whiskey. That means it could be less than, than two years. years. It could be older. But if it was older, why wouldn't you put straight? Sometimes these guys don't put it on there. Sometimes they ain't straight. Sometimes ain't nothing wrong with that. A little, you know. A little to the left, a little to the right. I mean, I think I think the smell, not the spice. The taste isn't bad, but I think the smell is better than the, the vanilla. The there. There's that sweetness at the like in the middle at the end. Right? You could discern whatever the fuck it is. Some this shit's a candy fruits and something else. There is a kind of fruit there. I don't know exactly what, but something there. I'd say more like a date. Like, like almost like, a, like an orange or a peach. Like yeah, it's got some kind of like marmalade ish thing at the end. But spice. Vanilla, thin, spice. That's how you should sell the whiskey to a customer. 25 bucks. That's the fourth selling bucks. point. There you go. 25 dollars. Get out You're of my You're not going to get a better price, honestly, a size rack anywhere else. I'll take anything in dot com. 2380, I'll take everything. Yep. Go on there, buy whatever the fuck you want. Um, our shipping rates too have gone down. So you should see them anywhere from 30 to 40% less. And what you've paid in the past. So that's a nice little selling point for ArthurKinkinian.com.
The first American ca cocktail, the Sazerac. So that's what it's named after, by the way. I think we did say that. It was named after the... the named after General Custard Sazerac. No, I just made that up. That's not true at all. Just sit. Why are you lifting that paper on me? I know what you're going to do with that paper. I still so. got your ass. You lobbed it like a little bitch. You're not going to hit me. And you have to look at you. Barely got me. All right. Uh, everyone, see you later. That's the end of today's show. Nice little rye review. Even though we just shit, after we reviewed why? it, we shit on. Review. Why, why? We shit on reviewers. Like, they're stupid. They don't know what they're talking about. Don't listen to them. We're like, well, we this is our fucking desert. This guy, 10 JP Mets balls. <laughs> whatever the fuck you're going to call it. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to give this four JP Mets balls out of five. Speaking of Mets balls, I'm going to Mets uh, Stadium, City Field tonight, watching Blink-182. It's like I'm finally living my high school dreams. I've never been a Blink-182 fan. I've always been a Blink fan, baby. Uh, shit's soft. Too soft for me. Shit's what? Soft? Too much in their feelings. Yeah. What are you listening my to? My mom Fucking left me too early. Never yet. saying about their moms leaving them. Always saying about, <sighs> who's this fucking bozo? Got a bozo at the gate here. Look at these dummies. Who's the? Oh, it's a fireman. It's a fireman? Oh. Yo, what's up? It's a fireman. <laughs> I take it back. You're not a bozo. That's the deadliest catch brother. That's why I tell, uh, say what it looks like. He looks like one of the, the broad, the, I think they're the Hill Strands. If, you have, if you're a deadliest catch fan, the Hill Strands. No, no, I got my one. I got a one. That's for Joey. That's Joey's. Joey has one. That's not mine. All right. We're done here. We're done. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in.